Hi, my name is Thurza Cuthand. I am the director of Medicine and Magic, which is a two channel installation about um, folk magic in Scotland and medicine in Canada and North America. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak. This is the 36th edition of the Teddy Award, and we are discussing the project Medicine and Magic by Thurza Cotton. Hi Thurza, welcome back to the Teddy Award, to the Teddy TV. Uh, we are very happy to have you once again after 2020 uh, with a new project, um, Medicine and Magic. Um, this project of yours kind of bridges to different sides of family history um from from your from your past can you talk a bit about these these particular histories and how you found found them how did you came across them and why did you decide to kind of link them together in in this in this film sure so um the first part like because it's a two channel installation and one yeah. is about um this bear robe that my great great grandfather um was healed with um, after he was injured in a battle. And then the other video is about um, this woman who was accused of witchcraft in Scotland and um, and was executed actually. And she has the same last name as um, some of the people in my Scottish side of my family. And then with the, the my great great grandfather, obviously, he's related to me. So it's like trying to talk about um, sort of the two um, sort of spiritual principles in in mm. Scottish folk magic and in Plains Cree um, sort of like medicine. I guess we we don't call it magic. It's like medicine when you're like healing somebody yeah. spiritually. So um, so yeah, it's about those two things and and it's kind of like comparing them and the fact that. Um, you know, my grandfather survived and then um, this woman who might be related to me did not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what, what was it that, that you felt like um, that, that creates this bridge between, because these are two sort of different trajectories, as, as you also pointed it out. What was this link that, that, that you found and that interested you? Um, I mean, I think with Scottish, um, what was called witchcraft, which was their folk magic. I mean, I think that the reason that there was all these like witch trials was because of colonization and um, the Scottish people getting colonized and Christianized and sort of bringing that whole viewpoint into Scotland and what it did to especially women's lives. And then um, and then it was the same thing in um in North America, you know, like we were colonized and this injury that my great great grandfather had was because of um, fighting the government. So, so yeah, it's all kind of like, like they're both tied together by colonization, but from like different points in the world. Yeah, right. And what, what like, what would you say? Because this is like also a topic that resurfaces again and again in your work and in your practice. Um, in this project, what was your particular visual approach to it? And what would you say, is this like sort of a continuation of, of um, this artistic um, tackling of this, of this subject in, in your practice? Or do you think it's, it's more of an elevation from that? It's a new step towards or, or how do you position it within your own practice? I guess, I mean, it talks about colonization again, but also I think it's also touching on things that happened before colonization, mm -hmm. like sort of the knowledges we had, like on like both sides of my family and, you know, like the, the things we were doing at the time. And, you know, like just, it's like, I've always wanted to sort of like reclaim um, knowledge and information from the past that has been, you know, somewhat lost to us because of colonization, like this story, mm -hmm with my grand great great grandfather I only knew because it was written down in a book that's like not, not printed anymore and then the the woman who was murdered for being a witch um she was you know like I only knew about her because there was the records of the Scottish witch witchcraft trials were like published yeah. so I read them there yeah mm, I see and how did you came across this material by the way 
Um, well, the, the story about my grandfather or my great great grandfather, I always knew because um, I because I, I had my mom had the book when I was little. So I'd read yeah. the story and I also heard about it from my mom and my grandfather. And um, so that story I knew really well, like I grew up mm. with that story and heard it all the time. And I was, I was fascinated by it, of course, because it was such an interesting story. Right. And um, yeah, and then the, the one with the witchcraft trial that was I only learned about that through the database because it was so far back. And and I don't really have a lot of knowledge of my Scottish ancestors. Like I know a little bit, but yeah. not deep stories. I think also because it was like a matrilineal line there and mm. there's not a lot of people don't you know keep stories about the women in history yeah. which is a really unfortunate thing so. yeah but then in this sense it's also like your this, your installation also becomes in a way a historiographic project or what would you say yeah um i mean i like i'm hoping it will kind of be seen that way because i would like it to go back into the record. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of like debate around, like my great grandfather was the war chief of that particular battle he got injured in. And, and that's kind of been lost in the history books. And it was like somebody else got sort of mm. the credit for that, mm. that battle. So it's kind of like always wanting to like, sort of not fix history, but correct like the, the writing of it. Yeah, or maybe even to just bring to the surface things that might be suppressed or forgotten somewhat or at least i had like mm -hmm. this kind of feeling about it yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's it's also interesting because um you like as you mentioned like part of it is like oral history accounts and part of it is like something that was very vividly present in your in your family um and i was wondering you know when you when you when you work with something that's so present in in your own family and that's like so close to you as a person if that had any kind of i don't know alteration or change about how you feel or or thought about spirituality um in this sense or yeah i, I was just curious about this yeah, I mean, it's interesting because my mom was an atheist, so I was raised mm. by, by like an atheist parent, but um, like spirituality has always been pretty important to me. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to talk about too, though, because I think being Indigenous, there's always parts you want to hold back from releasing to the world just because it's like, you know, like closed ceremonies and that kind of yeah. thing. And, um, and the fact that this account had already been written down in a book that people could read if they right. had read this really old out of print book. Like it, it made me feel better about telling the story that it had already been printed. Yeah, absolutely. How did you come across with the particular footage that you use or, or how did you tackle the, the materiality of, of, of this installation? Yeah, I mean, some of it, like the Super 8 background footage was all stuff I'd shot before and it didn't turn out. So I had to like make it kind of interesting. And then the bears were all like, I, I actually wanted to try to um, film actual bear cubs, but there's like, you know, mm -hmm. like the only way you would find a bear cub is if they were, you know, like a rescue. So I approached a rescue and they're like, no, we just, we don't want them to meet humans because they have to like go back into the wild. So I actually used like stock footage of bears. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I see. Um, it's it's a quite fascinating thing to think about this whole aspect of spirituality as like heritage and sort of the film reclaiming parts of a heritage or reworking heritage in a way. What is your take on this? I guess, yeah, I mean, it, like, I think, <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to figure out the right words to say about mm -hmm. heritage and film. Um, I mean, I think it's just kind of something that just comes out in my work where I talk about like where I've come from and the people I belong to. And, um, you know, like there's a lot of responsibility when you're part of an indigenous people because you mm -hmm. have to sort of like, you know, 
protect <laughs> protect your community and that that extends to the stories you tell so i think about that a lot yeah it and um yeah like kind of a final question to the whole thing like because i'm still like a bit stuck on this idea of, of oral history and how like a certain part of a family's history just like travels from generation to generation just like spoken word and tale and i mean as you mentioned you also have like a written record about this but then yeah like somehow how this activates a certain connection over between generations and the connection between like the past and the present and possibly also the future so like there is like this temporal element through oral history that takes place in in this installation as well um, and also i think the the visual approach that you use to this like these um, um this like partly fan footage partly like your own footage that like slowly unfolds like it's sort of for me it, it felt like that it's in connection with this kind of um temporal breakage which one might say it's 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 in a way a queer temporality in a way i don't know what your take would be on that and if you would consider it as such as like a queer temporal figuration of of these family history yeah um i've never thought of like the queer temporal thing but um for sure there's something about like retelling these stories and mm -hmm. like having them recorded like in video that makes me feel like they'll continue on in in like it becomes its own kind of oral story when you turn it into a video and i've always been really like fond of that um yeah i guess i guess i mean i guess the only thing i would say about it is that like the having these stories makes me feel like i know these people even though mm. um like i don't know when they died but it's been <laughs> it's been like a long time because i didn't even know my great grandfather when i was growing up i only knew my grandfather so yeah yeah well there's a thank you very much for being here with us and talking about medicine and magic um yeah i wish you all the best for the badlinale and i hopefully we we will see each other at some point throughout the festival mm -hmm, i would love that yeah, yeah. thank you very much